It's old school toys with blaze. Bib Fortuna comes packaged in the Return of the Jedi retro card back that looks just like the vintage figure from 1983. In the top left hand corner you have the Return of the Jedi 40th Anniversary logo. In the top right hand corner you have that he's for ages 4 and up and a choking hazard warning. The top center features the Star Wars Return of the Jedi logo from 1983. Just below that you also have Bib Fortuna's name on a yellow backdrop. You have a bubble with the figure that shows all of his accessories and the figure as well. And you have the artwork from the 1983 card back. In the bottom right hand corner you have the classic Kenner logo. The back of the box features the Star Wars logo and the Star Wars Black Series logo in the top right hand corner. You also have a cross sale that has other figures available in this wave, including Bib Fortuna himself, the Emperor, Papalu, Stormtrooper, and Chewbacca. It also states commemorate the 40th anniversary of Star Wars Return of the Jedi with figures from the Black Series featuring classic design and packaging. In the bottom of the box, the right hand corner, you have the Disney and the Hasbro logos. If you're an opener like I am, this figure is also available in his original packaging on Amazon for $16.83 with free shipping if you're a Prime member. The best part of Bib Fortuna by far is the sculpting that they did on his head and hands. The head looks amazing. You have some blue paint above the brow and along the tentacles that look really great. And they really captured his eyes, which is very important. Those red eyes that Bib Fortuna had. And his hands are sculpted really well with the nails. He did a lot of communicating with his hands in the movie and that's what made the character so memorable and I think that's why it's kind of had a lasting life in Star Wars. He also has some metal pieces in front of his robes just like the vintage figure had and just like he had in the movie and he has gauntlets that are gray on his wrists. He also has this piece, this lower part of his robes that does not come off, you know, not with a great deal of effort that go over his legs. These inhibit the articulation a great deal, just like his outer robe does. They made a really poor choice with the feet. They're really thin and tiny, and they don't really support the figure. He can't stand on his own. And on top of that, they have really shallow peg holes. So the NECA stands don't work well with this figure. The other stands that I do do okay. But it's just not, it's just poorly designed. I'm really disappointed that they gave him such small feet because a figure that's this heavy is not going to stand on his own with those small pointy feet. Okay, let's take a look at Bib Fortuna's articulation. His head is on a ball joint, plus it rotates a full 360 degrees and you've got an extra neck joint here. His arms rotate 360 degrees at the shoulder, plus both arms have a hinge that allow them to move up and down. His elbows have a joint that allow them to move up and down, plus they can rotate from side to side. Both hands rotate, plus you have a joint that allows them to move up and down. Of course, that is on both arms. He has a waist swivel, and when you get to his legs, it gets really tricky. He has the standard Black Series articulation. The legs move forward, out to the side, and you have thigh swivels on both legs. He also has double jointed knees on both sides. Now his feet, which are one of my biggest complaints about this figure, is the feet are just useless all the way around. 
They do rotate a full 360 degrees at the ankle and they pivot and they're supposed to be hinged to move up and down. However, the cuffs on his pants keep them from doing so. So that is your articulation for your Black Series Bill Fortuna. Bib Fortuna comes with three cups, which is a really poor choice for accessories with this figure. You know, since they're going with the retro card back, they should have given them the staff that we saw with the vintage figure and in the Book of Boba Fett. Unfortunately, they went with the same accessories that came with the Black Series version, and it's just a poor choice. I don't even remember seeing the figure with these in the movie. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't remember it. It's almost like he's trying to do his own kind of Jedi mind trick with Luke Skywalker. One, the head sculpt and paint are really great. Also, the hands and fingers look really good as well. Lastly, this being one of the first 1983 Return of the Jedi figures released by Kenner makes it a great choice to put on a classic card back. <coughs> One, he comes with three cups. What is he, the palace dishwasher? What? Two, the quote unquote soft goods robe and cape make any articulation nearly impossible with this figure. What? And worst of all, his tiny feet make it impossible for him to stand unassisted and the stand holes are so tiny, it's hard to find a stand that you can use with him. What? <laughs> Well, it's only the second time in old school toys this has happened, but Bib Fortuna only gets one star. You know, the sculpt's good, but that's the only thing he has going for him, and that's only on the head and hands. Everything else is pretty basic. The fact that the figure has such tiny feet and is so heavy was just a poor design choice. What do you guys think about this figure? Do you have a different opinion than I do? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up on the way out. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Ring that notifications bell and you'll never miss another video from Old School Toys. Thanks so much and may the force be with you.